was the great mystery writer Agatha Christie who once penned, Trains are wonderful. To travel by train is to see nature and human beings. In fact, to see all of life. There was a time when towns and town folk were often defined by the railway. Places where giant engines puffed noisily through villages on their way to faraway destinations. Some towns grew to be defined by the very nature of the railroad, such as in Monon, Indiana, home of the Hoosier Line, the train that moved people and products from place to place for decades during the early 20th century. It is in this town, most appropriately, that one would find the Monon Connection Museum. The word Monon is a Potawatomi Indian word, and it means swiftly or quickly running water. And so I think as an advertising thing, when they started calling uh, the rail line the Monon, it was because, you know, they were thinking quickly running uh, passenger service, swiftly running freight service. And, and then when the, when the railroad became more predominant, it was a better way to travel. It was a better way to haul things. It was probably much quicker than trying to, to travel the other way. A lot of people didn't have cars, and so that was, that was the way to travel. The Monon Connection Museum is a tribute to a time gone by. It's packed with full-size train memorabilia as far as the eye can see. The museum is a veritable feast of eye candy for those interested in Indiana's rich railroad history, all mightily displayed on an acre of land just off US 421, one mile north of the town's only stoplight. We have uh, the largest collection of Monon rolling stock in the country. We've got uh, a steam-powered crane, we've got uh, boxcars, we've got three cabooses on property. One of them that you can, uh, when the museum is open, is unlocked to the public and you can go inside the caboose. There are more than 6,500 items here. Amazingly enough, most of the collection comes from one man, Dale Ward, who once managed a stone quarry in the area. Ward began buying various pieces of railroad memorabilia for fun, and then just kept going, and going, and going. For nearly 30 years, he gathered everything from model train pieces to full-size train cars and other items that reflect Indiana's rich locomotive past. The reason he started collecting was because he wanted to uh, maintain history because he saw people throwing stuff away, throwing items away, lanterns, pictures, um, uh, tickets, all these items that were part of the, of the history of the railroad. One of the most impressive items in the collection is a posh 84-foot castle on wheels, the Flagler train car. Henry Flagler was one of the early American titans of industry who partnered with John Rockefeller to create the Standard Oil Company. Flagler was also a railway executive who had this car built in 1898 for his wife. It features a private bedroom and dining car, Tiffany glass windows, a fireplace, and ornate woodworking throughout. The car was eventually bought by Ike Duffy, a meatpacking magnate from Anderson, Indiana, who then sold it to the Holman family of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway fame. These cars were definitely private owner cars, and these were of the wealthy of the wealthiest. Uh, they were referred to as palace cars. Um, probably less than, than 200 of them made in that time period, and probably, probably there's probably less than 50 of them that still exist. It's a warehouse size gallery, complete with a small restaurant and banquet room to boot. The name Monon Connection Museum is perhaps apropos of this giant facility, not only because it traces the history of the connecting rail lines that once ran through Indiana, it also provides visitors with a true connection to the past. I have multiple people telling me that when they come back a second or third time with other people, well, this must be new. I didn't see it the last time. Well, it's because there are so many items, it was probably here. They just didn't see it the last time. 